Well, hey everybody, today I'm talking about hiking clothing and how to build a layering system like a pro. And you're watching Andy Parrish Outdoors. Well, hey everybody, Andy here, and thanks for joining me today. And today we're talking about hiking clothing. How do you put together an awesome layering system for hiking, backpacking, outdoor adventures? And if you wait to the very end, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks of what I chose for my own personal layering system to give you some ideas as you build your own awesome layering system. Now, if you're new to the channel, this channel is all about backpacking and outdoor adventures and gear and tips and tricks and all that great stuff. So if you like that, go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell so that you can be alerted every time I post new content. And there's a ton of new content coming, lots of great stuff that we're gonna be talking about here on the channel. So go ahead and do it right now. All right, so sit back and relax and let's dive in to today's topic. Well, what's a layering system and what does it need to have? Well, a layering system is really just a collection of clothing that you put together that's great for the environment that you're heading to. So if you're doing a day hike or a multi-day backpacking trip, all the different types of conditions that you may encounter, your clothing needs to be able to handle that environment well. Now that may be sleet or snow or hail or sunny weather or windy conditions or thunderstorms, who knows? So a layering system is going to be adaptable to all those different types of conditions that you think you may encounter on your next trip. Now for a great effective layering system, there's four different layers that you need. Let's walk through those now. So your first layer is going to be your base layer. Its primary function is gonna to be to wick moisture away from your body. Moisture can lead to blisters, moisture can lead to chafing, moisture can even lead to hypothermia. So moisture is not your friend on trail. So having a great uh, base layer system that can wick moisture away from your body is vital. So the best materials for moisture wicking are gonna be either your synthetics, like your dry fits, or they're gonna be um, some of your natural fibers like your wool and your wool blends. They allow that moisture to be pulled away from your skin and evaporate, um, keeping you dry and comfortable on trail. Now your second layer is gonna be your mid layer. It's gonna provide a little bit of warmth, um, but it's meant to be extremely breathable warmth. So it's something that you can hike in as you're exerting yourself um, and your body core temperature is rising. You know, your base layer is pulling that moisture away from your body and that mid layer is breathable enough um, that it keeps you from overheating. You can do some hiking in it. It allows that moisture to evaporate and keep you comfortable on trail. So that second layer, the mid layer, is a highly breathable um, hoodie, fleece top um, jacket. Now the third layer is gonna be your insulation layer. That's gonna be something like a down puffy jacket or a synthetic puffy jacket or a, a fleece hoodie or something that's gonna provide a huge amount of warmth out on trail. So for those colder nights um, or if you're doing overnights, you know, a, a warm puffy jacket uh, paired with your uh, mid layer can provide all the warmth that you need um, down to whatever temperatures you're heading to. Now the final layer, your fourth layer is gonna be your rain shell, okay? That's gonna be your rain jacket, your rain pants that provide a, not only a rain protective uh, layer for those inner layers uh, to keep them from getting wet, but it's also gonna be great um, for windy environments. So. Uh, that that outer shell can be paired um, even with just your base layer on a, a warm morning where uh, it's really windy and you just want to kind of take the edge off that wind. Um, or you can put it over top of your mid layer um, for cooler mornings just to provide a little bit of extra protection against wind or maybe a little bit of extra warmth uh, to hike in. Um, or when you're sitting around camp, you may be in all four of those layers uh, when the temperature really starts to drop. 
Now, in addition to those four layers, there's also gonna be some different accessories that you may think about bringing along depending on the environment you're heading into. So for example, if you're heading into a hot, you know, desert summer uh, area, having something like a wide brimmed hat um, to give you extra sun protection might make some sense. Um, sunglasses. Um, in cooler environments, it may be something like a warm buff or hat and gloves. Um, you know, or, or changing your hiking socks from, you know, thinner summer socks to uh, heavier weight, uh, you know, cold weather footwear. So there's a wide range of different things that you can bring in addition to those four layers just to supplement your comfort um, to handle anything that environment may throw your way. Now, if you're finding any of this useful at all, please go ahead and give a thumbs up to the video. I really appreciate it. It, it helps the channel and helps others find this type of content if they're looking for it. So thanks so much. So now that you have a little overview of just what goes into putting together a great layering system, let's talk a little bit about my own personal layering system. Now for my base layers, um, I have a couple different options that I go between depending on the conditions that I'm heading to. So in my hottest, warmest environments, I'm typically gonna use the Patagonia Capoline Cool T-shirt. This has been a great, super lightweight, super breathable, great moisture wicking garment for those hottest weather environments. Now for my base layer bottoms, um, in the warmest environments, I just go with a Nike running shorts. Um, the Nike running shorts are great because they have a liner, um, they're extremely lightweight and breathable, and I just find them extremely comfortable hiking on trail in the warmest of environments. Now, if it's a now, little bit cooler, I'm probably looking at the Capoline um, cool hoodie version of that Patagonia. This has been a great long sleeve um, hoodie uh, adaptation to that same t-shirt. It just provides greater sun protection um, in very sunny environments, or if I just want a little bit of extra warmth, still extremely breathable, still very lightweight. I've been using that a lot lately, and I really, really love the Patagonia Capoline Cool hoodie. Now, if it's a little bit cooler or the nights are going to get a little bit cooler, I'll wear something like the Columbia Silver Ridge convertible pants um, because during the day I can hike in them as shorts and then as the temperature drops, I can put uh, the bottom, zip them back on and provide a little bit of extra warmth um, as those temperatures fall. Um, they're also great if you're going through uh, trails where the undergrowth is kind of... Uh, overdone and uh, you have to do a little bit of bushwhacking, it provides a little bit of protection so that you're not scraping up your legs as much too if you have to add those back in. Now, in my coldest environments, I'll tend to go with a, just a full um, hiking pant like the Prana um, Zion Stretch. Those are phenomenal, I love those. Um, and they're so breathable um, and they're so good at moisture wicking that you can really wear them in pretty warm environments and still be really comfortable. So there's a ton of flexibility with all of those um, from very warm environments to very cold environments. Now for my mid layers, there's so many great options out there on the marketplace today. Um, I love my Melanzana, I love um, my Patagonia R1, um, and I'm testing out a few new pieces of, of gear for 2021, um, two that include uh, the Patagonia R1 Air and the Appalachia Gear Company's Alpaca Fleece Hoodie. Um, which I really love that one. I'll be taking that on my trip here to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park uh, here uh, this spring to test it out in some pretty cool conditions, rainy conditions, um, lots of elevation changes. Um, so how does it deal with body temperature adjustments, regulating temperature, uh, breathability, all of that sort of thing. I'm really looking forward to check that out. So far, it checks all the boxes. Now for my third level, um, I typically lean on the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer 2 hoodie is what I'm using now. Um, that's a great kind of all around performer, very lightweight, very compact, um, compressible, doesn't take a lot of space in your pack. 
Um, it's warm down to pretty cool temperatures and paired together with all these different layers, you can go well below freezing and, and still be comfortable. Um, I like the hoodie over the previous version that I had that did not have the hoodie just because it provides a little extra warmth. Um, so that's the Mountain, Hard Hard Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer uh, 2. Now, in colder, colder environments, I do also from time to time pull out the Montbell um, Alpine Light Parka. Um, and this is one, if I'm going somewhere well below freezing um, and I'm going to be at camp uh, overnight and, and not doing a whole lot of, um, you know, movement during those times, this is a warmer jacket, a little heavier jacket that I'll, I'll bring in those environments. Keeps me toasty warm. That's the Montbell Alpine Light uh, parka. Now for my rain gear, there's, there's different options too. So I will typically use in the warmer months, the summer environments, I'll use um, something like the Montbell uh, Versalite uh, jacket and pants. They're very lightweight. They're great against the wind, um, but they're also very breathable. So if it's, you know, hot outside, I typically don't like to hike in rain gear, but sometimes you just kind of have to. So having uh, rain gear that's a little bit more breathable, um, I find is just a little bit more comfortable on trail. So in the warmest of environments, I'll bring that super lightweight uh, Montbell Versalite jacket. Now in even colder conditions for my rain shell coverage, I want a more robust option um, than the Montbell. And I typically lean on the Arc'teryx Zeta LT model. Um, it's a great Gore-Tex jacket. Um, you know, you're you're going to be able to withstand pretty intense conditions um, with flying colors, no problems. So I love that Arc'teryx uh, Zeta LT jacket. It's my favorite in cooler, colder conditions um, where you don't really worry about breathability as much. You worry about just hardcore coverage. I want to stay dry. Now, as a little added bonus, in addition to my layering system, I also like to bring sleep clothes. So it's a separate pair of clothes that I know are going to be dry at the end of the day that I can change into and sleep in and be extremely comfortable. Um, I like them to also be versatile. So in a pinch, if I needed to, I can hike in them. So in my warmest uh, weather, a lot of times I'll bring that um, t-shirt and shorts combination. Um, as my sleeping gear or just a t-shirt and and boxers um, that way if I need to hike in that t-shirt like the Patagonia Capilene cool um, it's ready to go um, uh, or the shorts are a great option to sleep in as well now in the cooler environments I love that smart wool 150 top and bottom set so I may be hiking in the Capilene cool uh, long sleeve hoodie and I'll bring the smart wool 150s as a backup to sleep in or if it really really gets cold um, then you can pair them with the other things too and, and just provide greater warmth but that's how I do my sleep system now which one of those layering systems uh, for your personal kit needs a little bit of work. Go ahead and leave that in the comments down below. Did you learn anything? Do you have any questions? Again, leave all that down in the comment section down below. I'll, I'll reply to those. Let's get that conversation going. And thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Till next time, be well.